Okay, then students, um, on this clip, we're going to be going over an example where we're going to compare exponential growth versus linear or constant growth, okay? Uh, we're going to look at it within the context of income growth. All right, before we take a look at the example, um, let's take a look at some equations that helps us to see the way we're going to model um, these two different kinds of growth, okay? So, first of all, let's take a look at um, exponential growth, okay? So... What does exponential growth look like? Um, well, these are the equations for exponential growth. Uh, let me underline this first. So for exponential growth, they can be broken down into continuous or discrete. Okay, so for continuous growth, we're going to have y equals a e to the rt. Okay, uh, this is continuous. And for uh, discrete growth, we have y equals a times 1 plus r to the t. Okay, so this is discrete. All right, how about uh, constant growth? Constant or linear? Constant or linear growth? Uh, for constant or linear growth, uh, we have... Just to basically make equation y equals mx plus d, but we're going to use a different set of letters here. We're going to use y equals at plus b. Okay? So this is constant or linear growth. All right, what do the variables mean in the exponential growth? In the exponential growth, um, a is basically the initial amount. Uh, r is the growth rate. Remember, the growth rate has to be in decimal form, okay? It has to be in decimal form or fraction, decimal or fraction. And um, T is a time. Now, E is a number, okay? So E is always equal to E. You're not going to change that. Just leave E alone. We're going to input it just like that in the calculator. E is equal to E. Um, and then we have Y is the final amount, okay? All right, now let's take a look at the uh, linear growth situation. If you have linear or constant growth, A is the growth, fixed growth, okay? Fixed growth amount. Since it's constant, the growth amount is going to be fixed, okay? Fixed growth amount, also known as a slope, all right? And then T is the time, and B is the initial amount, okay? Initial amount that you started with. And y basically yields the final amount. Okay? So there you have it. All right. Another variation of this continuous growth function that you can see in some textbooks uh, is basically um, a equals p e to the rt. Okay, where p is the initial amount of the principal, the final amount is a and r and t are the same as this one. Okay? All right, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at an example considering these two uh, models. All right, so let's take a look at this. It says Lena wants to invest twenty-seven thousand. She's looking at two possible accounts. Account A is a standard savings account that pays three point seven annual interest compounded continuously, and account B would pay a fixed amount of three hundred every quarter. Okay. So it says, uh, if uh, Linda can invest for nine years only, which account will give her the higher return on her investments? How much more will she make by choosing the higher paying account? So we're going to compare these two, the fixed amount of 300 a quarter or 3.7 interest compounded continuously. So let's delineate those two by using the account letters. Uh, so we have account A. Account A is a continuous growth. You see, when it says compounded, that automatically means expo exponential, all right? So keep that in mind. When you have compound interest, you're, you're going to become exponential function, okay? So uh, for that one, we're going to be using the model y equals a e to the rt because it's continuous. It says continuous here, so that's why I'm using this one, okay? All right, so let's plug in the values. We know that the initial amount that you're starting with is 27,000. A growth rate 
is 3.7%, which is 3.7 over 100. To make this over 1, we have to move the decimal point forward twice in the denominator, and then we have to do exactly the same thing in the numerator. Move the decimal point forward twice. Okay, so we have to insert a 0 here. So 3.7% is the same thing as 0 0.037. Okay? And then um, the time, T, we do not know. This is T. Oh, let's put a question mark there. Yeah, let's look at this T. Okay, now um, the final amount is basically what we're going to be looking for. So we just want to generate a model. So the model that we're going to be using is going to be Y equals 27,000. E, remember E is a number. R is 0 0.037 T. Okay, so this is the growth model for the uh, um, account that pays a continuous interest of point of 3.7 compounded annually, okay? All right, now let's take a look at account A and account B. So for account B, we have a constant growth. Okay, how do I know that the growth is constant? Well, it says it right here that, um, it says right here that, let's fill up a little bit, here, a fixed amount of 300 every quarter, okay? So the amount is fixed. The amount of payment is fixed at 300 every quarter. Okay, so let's let's generate a model. We'll, we're looking at growth per per year here. Okay, so we have to be a little bit careful. All right. So in this one, we're going to be using the um, equation y equals a t plus b. Okay, a is a fixed growth amount, which is 300. Uh, but it's 300 per quarter. So per year, we have to multiply it by four because um, it's, uh, we have four quarters in a year. Okay, so it's 300 times four per year, which is basically 24, uh, 1,200 a year, okay? So every year, the amount goes by 2,400, or it goes 300 every quarter. Um, now, the initial starting amount is the same, 2,700. So 27,000. So what is the model? the growth model for this equation when t equals t. The growth model is basically going to be y equals 1200t plus 27,000. Okay? All right, so if you take a look at this, um, the question is, which one grows faster? The one that's compounded continuously or the one that you have a constant amount every, every time? every quarter. All right, so let's take a look at option A. I mean, part A of the question says nine years. So let's look at nine years and see which one is going to go faster, okay? So for uh, part A, we have T equals nine years, okay? So for account A, what are we going to get? So let's put it, let's put Y sub A for account A. is going to be 27,000 times E to the parenthesis 0 0.037 times t, which is 9. Okay, so when you're entering this in your calculator, please be sure to uh, encapsulate this growth rate and the uh, time in parentheses. okay? So there you have it. And then we're going to plug this into our calculator, and it tells us how much uh, we'll get after, after 9 years, all right? All right, so we're going to plug it in our calculator. Uh, it's going to be approximately uh, 37,000, uh, $668.98, okay? That's the amount after nine years using this uh, compound interest of 0.37. Now, let's take a look at the linear model. What if T is equal to nine years? Well, how much are we going to get after nine years if you didn't pay 300 every quarter or 1,200 a year? So it's going to be y, in this case is account b, equals 1,200 times 9 plus 27,000, okay? So you plug that into your calculator, you're going to get, uh, you know, for account b, you're going to get $37,800, okay? So uh, which one yields more? Uh, fairly, account account um, B yields more, okay? So by how much? 
ID yields uh, three thousand seven thirty thirty seven thousand eight hundred minus thirty seven thousand six hundred and sixty eight dollars ninety eight cents more. Okay, so let's do what what the difference is. So we're gonna uh, subtract this these two amounts from each other 37,800 uh, from we're going to subtract from 37,800 37,668 in 98 cents and we'll get $131 uh, in two cents $131.02 more than account like A okay all right, so there goes the answers. Okay, let's consider another scenario. What if uh, we stretch the time out a little bit? Okay, let's say uh, we'll, Lena wants to invest her money for 18 years. Which one will will she? Which one use more money and by how much? Okay, we should give a higher return. So for account A, remember for account A is the uh, continuous compound interest. So for account A, we're going to be using. Uh, y equals uh, 27,000 e to the 0.037t. Uh, That's for account A. That's the model that we generated before. And then for account B, we're going to be using uh, the constant of fixed foot model y equals um, 400t plus 27,000. Okay? Alright, so which one yields more? So we're going to set T to 18 years. Alright, so we're going to plug in that into both of them. So for this one, we're going to plug, we're going to evaluate 27,000 E to the, so be careful how you enter this, 0 0.037 times 18. Put it in parenthesis. We have a grouping error. And then here, we're going to compute 1,200 times uh, 18. So T is 18 in both cases, plus 27,000. Now let's see which one um, you use more, okay? All right, so we're going to plug both in our calculators. Uh, so for the uh, compound interest um, model, uh, we're going to have the amount is going to be um, 52,553 dollars in 77 cents. Like here, approximately that. And then this is for account A. And then for account B, uh, if we plug in, if we plug it in, we're going to get um, 48,600. So you can see that a switch has happened here. This was higher before in T equals nine years. Now T equals 18 years, this is much higher. So uh, by how much? So account A, yields more clearly account a yields uh, let's do the difference 52,553.77 minus 48,600 more so if we, if we do the if we subtract it we're going to end up with $3,953.77, which is way more than the other one, okay? So what does this tell us? It basically tells us that every um, exponential growth model will always, so you have an exponential growth model of the nature y equals a e to the rt, and you have a, if you have a linear growth model of the nature y equals a t plus b, even if this one starts early, uh, high, at a higher amount, the exponential model at infinity will always exceed your linear growth model, okay? So when investing money, that's the uh, importance of dividends or investment plan because your interest has interest, so it's always good to constantly reinvest. That makes your investment to have an exponential growth model as opposed to taking money out every time. The growth will be much slower, okay? So um, that's, that's that. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Uh, you can feel free to subscribe to my channel by clicking up here. More videos can be found on myclearserve.com. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.